The Tesla Model 3 is an incredible car with an amazing driving experience, modern interior, and decent looks. It's fun to drive, it's good for the environment, and finally, Tesla has proven that you can have an all-electric vehicle that looks good and doesn't completely break the bank. So in this video, I'm going to go over 10 insane features of the Tesla Model 3 that make it such a special vehicle. First off are the standard 18 inch wheels fitted here. No, they aren't the best looking, but they're incredibly unique in their design. In fact, according to the former head of aerodynamics for Tesla, the wheel size and design is one of the most critical aspects for overall aerodynamic efficiency of the vehicle. You see, the wheels themselves are alloy, but on top of that lie these plastic caps. Now, why would we have plastic hubcaps on a car this expensive? Well, it's not because they tried to save money by making an ugly or inexpensive wheel design. It's actually to increase efficiency. Check this out. As air flows around the side of the car, these caps actually allow air to more easily pass down the side of the car instead of getting trapped in the wheel well, causing inefficiencies. Overall, this actually leads to an aerodynamic efficiency and range extension increase of 10%. That's right, 10% efficiency just by having these caps. Now the crazy part is if you aren't a fan of it, there is kind of a hidden benefit. They're actually removable. Check this out, it's not that hard to do. All you have to do is grab them and give them a nice little tug. And underneath lies the actual wheel itself. Now, Tesla didn't focus on design whatsoever. It was all about minimizing mass and rolling inertia. At low speeds in the city, having that lowering rolling inertia and lower mass means better efficiency. Then at high speeds on the highway, well, we've got these to direct air around the side of the vehicle. But the cool unintended benefit of this is you can actually change the way your wheels look whenever you want. All you have to do is just remove these caps and then you've got a completely new wheel design. And they actually, for not focusing on design, look really good. There are, of course, optional 19-inch wheels for $1,500 that don't have this benefit. The next insane feature has to do with the Model 3's key. You see, Tesla has revolutionized the modern-day car key. Well, there is no car key whatsoever, actually. So how do you get into the vehicle? How do you lock and unlock it? Well, there are one of two ways. The first and coolest is the app. You've got this Tesla app here where all you have to do is have your phone in your pocket. You don't even have to have the app open. The phone connects to the car via Bluetooth, and when you get close to it, it allows you to open the door. So. I'm gonna put the phone in my pocket here, walk up, the car is currently locked, and it senses that the app is near, and I can just climb in the car. Now to drive the car, you don't even have to put your phone anywhere special. All you have to do is put your foot on the brake, put the car into drive, probably close the door first, and go ahead and pull away. Then the reverse holds true if you want to lock the vehicle. All you have to do is shut the door, and walk away from your Model 3. The Tesla app has a ton of cool functions in it. For one, if your vehicle is charging, you can click on the charging icon there and see all of the information, how much time it has left, how many miles of range right now, 239 miles of range without actually having to go into the Tesla. Now we'll go back here. You can even set the climate inside of the car. Let's say it's really hot out, you're in the house and you wanna cool down the car beforehand, you can go ahead and do that. Same thing if it's freezing, you can heat up the car. Not completely unique to Tesla, but still a cool feature. But what's really nice is you can lock and unlock your Tesla from anywhere in the world. Leave your car in a parking lot and forget if you locked it, well, no problem at all. You you can just click the lock and unlock button on the app. Or let's say you're somewhere and your friend left their wallet inside of the Tesla, you can go ahead and open the vehicle for them, they can grab their stuff and then lock it back up. 
check out these additional features. If we go on over to the controls panel, we've got a series of controls that you can use on your Tesla Model 3. For instance, if you're lost in a parking lot late at night and want to locate the vehicle, you can flash the headlights with the click of a button. How cool is that? Now, if you can't find them via the headlights, you can even honk the horn. You can also open the front trunk as well as open the rear trunk just from the app itself. There are also two additional modes that you can set using the app. There is a valet mode where you can limit the vehicle's acceleration and top speed. It also locks the trunk so that nobody can steal your belongings. There's also a speed limiter. If you give it to a friend that maybe is irresponsible or your younger kids, you can set the exact top speed in which the Tesla Model 3 is able to reach. But what happens if your phone runs out of battery or you leave it somewhere? Without the app, how are you possibly going to get into the Tesla? Well, there is one other unique way of getting into your Model 3. The second way of getting into the Tesla Model 3 is by using this key card. Its credit card shape fits very easily in your wallet. And all you have to do is walk up to the Model 3 and tap the key card right here on the B pillar. The vehicle goes ahead and unlocks, open up the car, and then to start it, unlike the app where you don't have to do anything, all you have to do is place the key card right behind the cup holders and you're ready to go. What's really cool actually is you don't even need to remove this key card from your wallet. If you have a thin enough wallet, leave that in there. You just pull that out. And there you go. Just lock the Tesla and we can walk away. One of the Tesla Model 3's crazy features is the interior itself. It is incredibly minimalistic. I mean, all you have is this strip of dash with this very nice wood. You can actually feel the grain to it. Feels high quality. A steering wheel and a 15 inch screen. There's no buttons everywhere. There's no vents everywhere. It's really as simple as it gets, and it improves visibility and also makes the cabin feel more airy. Speaking of the screen, it controls nearly every single function of the vehicle, and I mean everything from, I'll talk about the steering wheel, to the air vents, to the heated seats, to a lot more than that. Now, the screen itself, the responsiveness is unbelievable. It's touchscreen and works just as well as any smartphone or tablet really good graphics as well. And it even has some hidden gems. Check this out. We click the T button here, scroll down. You can draw on your Tesla. I wonder who drew that. That's really awkward. There are even a series of Atari video games that you can play on your Tesla. How crazy is that? Go ahead and click the logo. We've got a series of options here. Asteroids, Lunar Lander, Missile Command, Centipede. I'm not good at any of these games, but we're going to attempt to play one briefly. Push to start. It even has a little coin slot here with a push to eject logo series of controls. Are you going to use this? Probably not. But the fact that Tesla put the energy into making this, I think it's pretty cool. Check this out. On the map, we've got a list of all of the supercharging stations in the United States so you can plan your route out if you want to make a long distance road trip. In the Bay Area, yeah, there are a ton of them. Arguably one of the coolest features of the Model 3 has to do with these two scrolling wheels on the steering wheel. Now, normally you're used to seeing some sort of label or indication that this would do volume up and down and maybe this would change the radio station, but there's no labels whatsoever. And it's not really readily apparent what they actually do. And that is because they have a multitude of functions depending upon what setting you are in in the multimedia system. Now, if you're listening to the radio, yes, these do control the volume, but what happens if you're in another mode? So we're gonna go ahead and click the car button here to bring up the set of controls. If you click on mirrors, if you notice, you look throughout the cabin, there's no typical mirror adjustment on the side door panel here anywhere where you can adjust the location of the mirrors. Well, those have been relocated to the steering wheel. As it says here, we have now clicked the left mirror 
If I scroll downwards, the mirror points down. If I scroll up, the mirror points up, push to the right, and it tilts right, push to the left, and it tilts left. Pretty cool to have integrated into the steering wheel. But the coolest thing is how it changes the tilt and telescope of the steering column itself. Click on the steering wheel button and check this out. That is awesome. I can't believe no one else has thought of this. I never thought in any car an impressive feature would have to do with the air conditioning, but Tesla has revolutionized something once again. Even in high-end exotics and the most luxurious vehicles in the world, nobody's done anything radical with the air conditioning vents. Sure, a little bit of design language, maybe nicer materials, but Tesla has changed the game. They have one enormous air vent that spans all the way from the left to the right side of the dash that blows air this way. Now you're probably thinking, well that's good and all, but all the other air vents have toggles and switches so I can adjust the airflow so it's pointed up or down or left or right. Well, Tesla has done that in an extraordinarily unique way. See, there is a secondary vent that runs along the dash right here that actually blows air upwards. That upward air meets with the horizontal air to adjust the angle of the airflow pointed at you. How crazy is that? Now, how do you control it all? Obviously, with the touch screen here, go ahead and click the climate button, and you're brought up with this beautiful display with some of the coolest graphics I've ever seen. Definitely the coolest graphics for airflow in a vehicle on the market, but it's showing the air just flowing out from the vents and check out what you can do. If you touch your finger to the side, now I'm pointing the air to the right for the passenger, pointing it to the left, pointing it up. Then you can actually touch two fingers to split the air direction on the passenger side into two, move those individually up and down, and you can do the same on the driver's side. Really, really cool, works well, and honestly props for the innovation. This next feature is so simple, yet shockingly overlooked by almost every single auto manufacturer. And that is a convenient place to put your cell phone where you can charge it and still visibly see the screen. Why do you need to see the screen other than for doing illegal things like checking text? Using Maps applications. Now, the Tesla Maps are quite nice, but if you wanted to use Waze, for instance, to see the location of police officers, communicate with other Wazers, you can't do so. You've got to use your cell phone. It seems so strange to me that car manufacturers think that the most ideal spot for your phone is in a random cup holder or, oh, let's charge it in the center console here where you can't get access to it or even in the glove box. But Tesla has done a fantastic job I think the best job of any car maker at integrating your phone seamlessly. Check this out. We've got this beautiful center console here, although it does pick up quite a bit of fingerprints because it is this shiny black. Go ahead and click there. It's magnetic, releases upwards. Right here, you have a tilted spot for your phone to sit. So you can place your phone here and easily see the screen. If you look even closer, you'll notice that there are even little ports at the bottom where you can slot in different charging devices. So if you've got the lightning cable or you need to charge your Android, you can easily route them in through here and plug them into the USB ports in the front of the compartment here. It's super simple, easy to use, compatible with all different types of phones. You've got your own little docking station where you can actually use your Maps apps without having to buy an aftermarket window unit or vent unit. Next up is the car's backup camera. Obviously, when you flick it into reverse, up pops a camera so you can see behind you. Kind of the industry standard nowadays in cars that are of any price whatsoever. But this backup camera is phenomenal. The display is absolutely massive and crystal clear. When you turn the steering wheel, like most backup cameras, it has guidelines to show you where the vehicle is going to go. But one thing I have never seen before is an exact readout 
of how far you are away from an object. What do I mean by that? So I'm gonna go in reverse now, back up into a parking spot. And as I get close to this wall behind me, it is going to tell me exactly how far away from the wall I am in inches. Here we go, a little closer. I am currently 29 inches away from the wall. Go a little closer. 17 inches away from the wall. Now, why is this useful? Why do you need to know the exact amount of inches you are away? Well, oftentimes it's difficult to tell the position of the camera relative to the bumper relative to the object you are backing up into. Some cars have guidelines, like a, a red line that goes across the screen, but you're not sure, is that a recommendation? Or if you cross that red line, are you gonna crash? This way, you know the exact amount down to the inch how far you are away. So hopefully you don't damage your beautiful Tesla. Next up has to do with speeding in the Tesla. Every car you've ever driven, you're holding on to the steering wheel and in front of the wheel is a tachometer and a speedometer. So you can see how fast you are going. Well, Tesla decided to completely change that. Right in front of the steering wheel is nothing. In fact, it's the air vent, then there's just open space, and you get a bit more visibility this way looking out over the hood. So that's nice. But then where do they put the speedometer? Well, it turns out it is located on the screen. The difficulty is it's up and to the right. So it is insane that they've relocated the Speedo from every single place you have known it to ever be to a new location, which has its pluses for the visibility standpoint, but it does have its major drawbacks. Imagine this scenario. You're driving in a place you're unfamiliar with, like right now. Let's say you're using the navigation on the screen. So you're going to have to use turn-by-turn -turn directions to figure out where to go. At the same time, you don't want to get a ticket, so you're having to look at the speed. But you can't just look at the speed right in front of you as you're looking down the road. There's really no way to focus on the road and focus on the speedo at the exact same time. It's actually impossible because of its location and distance. So that means as you're driving down the road in unfamiliar territory, you're looking down and to the right and down and to the right over and over again, and it is quite distracting. My solution to this is for Tesla to integrate a heads-up display unit that projects the speed right in front of you and turn-by-turn -turn directions. Lots of other cars have it, and it'd be an easy way to have essentially no change in visibility, keep everything simple, but have that added little bit of safety feature so you're not taking your eyes off the road. Next up is one of Tesla's claims to fame, autopilot. Despite being the entry level model, the Tesla Model 3 still comes with autopilot. That means when activated, the vehicle can steer itself in a lane around corners, slow itself down with traffic, speed itself back up, all without you touching the steering wheel. Now, this isn't unique to Tesla. Mercedes has a very good system as well, as does BMW, but Tesla's works better than any other auto manufacturer. It's more reliable, it just seems like it's a more confident system. A lot of times in my Mercedes, it just doesn't want to take the corner even though it says it's going to, and that's very scary. You have to have the utmost reliability of an autonomous system for it to be effective. In order to activate it, you click downwards twice on the stock here. I have activated the autonomous driving mode, and it is steering me in the lane following the flow of traffic. A little bit scary, but you know what? I trust in the system. Now, there is another level of autopilot called enhanced autopilot. For $5,000, you can upgrade your Model 3 to have enhanced autopilot, which gives it several different features, one being automatic lane changes. So if you signal, you can actually signal, and then the Tesla will drive itself over into that lane if it is clear. It can also exit freeways and go on to other freeways all in one motion without having to touch the steering wheel. That is impressive. Now I'm talking to you without my hands on the wheel and the vehicle is confidently going along. I got a little warning that says, apply light force to steering wheel. I've done that and now we have resumed the system. Now for an extra $3,000, you have fully autonomous driving hardware. 
Now, it's not fully autonomous yet, that's because of legislation, but it would give you the capability of having a fully autonomous point A to point B Tesla. What's really cool is they've even integrated it with your phone's calendar. So get this for the future when this can finally happen. You've got a doctor's appointment at 9 a.m. Your Tesla knows that, it's connected. You could then, without doing anything, set foot in the Tesla and it would drive you to your doctor's appointment without you doing anything, arriving on time. That is pretty awesome. Who knows how long that will take, but I can't wait for that day to come. Now, lastly, because we have this semi-autonomous driving, we have a lot of sensors in the car and those sensors can be used for various different things. One of which is a very cool graphics display of the traffic around you. Right now I'm going through traffic and it's showing me a series of cars around me exactly like it appears in real life. Check this out, we've got two cars in front of me and then three cars to the side as well as two cars behind me all showing up on the display. And as those trucks pass by, they're right there. Now, how often are you actually going to use this feature? That's to be determined, but it is very cool, especially useful as a triple check for your blind spot. So you look over your shoulder and you look in your mirrors, and then you could look down here and see, oh shoot, there actually is a vehicle in my blind spot. I should probably not go. It's also interesting how it's judging the size of the vehicles around you pretty accurately. When those trucks drove by, they were bigger on the screen than the smaller compact Golf that's in front of me. Well guys, there you have it, 10 insane features of the Tesla Model 3. I absolutely love this vehicle. If you're looking into one, seriously, I recommend it with flying colors. Oh, what a good car. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next video.